This is episode 68 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast is a weekly conversation that will help you think and grow in your faith. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode and find out more about our show at familylife.org. Whatever happens today, know that God's got it. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. It used to be a much more common question than it is now, like for small talk. Eh, read anything good lately? Oh, boy. Like, uh, now it's more like the stream anything good lately? I don't know. We might not be the most well-read morning show out there, but we still pick up a page turner from now and again. And what was the most recent thing? Most recent thing Okay, now, read. Yeah, now I know... That you know, everybody would say, "Well, okay, aren't you reading the Bible?" Okay, absolutely. That's, okay, that's yeah. that's a given. They, the Bible. We're talking yeah. about other books beside besides the Bible. And this is a sore subject. This is a tough subject for me because I am one of the best. I, maybe I'm not sure how you guys stack up with this. Stack up <laughs> the books. Okay, and stack. Do this. Huh. I'll I'll get a book. Oh, that sounds great. I'm gonna right. get that. And then I get it. And I order it. Gets to the house. Oh, I'm excited. And then I start it. And I've done that a whole bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, I've started a whole bunch mm-hmm. of books, and I don't get around to finishing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I have finished some, but the most recent, interesting, nobody would ever heard of it. And nobody would, uh, at least in our circles, would would read it. But I love reading about people and uh, their accomplishments. And this one happened to be one of my lifelong friends who actually wrote the book and had it published, uh, mainly just for his just for his family, huh. kind of a legacy. Because you know, when his when he's gone. His grandkids can see like, oh, this is what my grandfather did and all that kind of stuff. He was an architect. He was a, um, a partner in an architecture firm. And I'd heard stories over the years. I've known him since before high school. But, you know, as a professional, you know, as an adult, you know, I heard him tell stories from time to time. But in this architecture book, it told his whole history. So it was all about him and the buildings and the different things that he did. And I found it fascinating for me because, one, I knew the main character. Yeah. I mean, right. I, so some of the things I recognized in there, some of the stories, but it was just fascinating to to know someone so close, yet you didn't really know so many other things uh, about him. So uh, that was the latest book I read. Mm. I learned stuff about mm. architecture that I never had even considered before. Um, so it was interesting. It was a, it was a learning process, uh, not only of the person, but of his profession. There are so many professions out there that... You have no idea what anybody right. does. I mean, there's so many other jobs that, yes. that happen. So I just found it fascinating. So uh, I can't remember the title of the book. It doesn't really matter because <laughs> it was about my friend. That was and, about your friend. Yeah. Did it kind of make you wonder, like, how many other people in your lives have stories that you don't know about? Yes. Like, when you meet someone and you think, oh, I know, I know that person. Right. But you don't really know that person and how smart it would be to sit down and have conversations with people about things because you might you might learn some of those really cool stories that they're not like right out there with yeah Yeah. i you know we photo you know pictures are so important to us nowadays and we do that but words are a rarity uh, as far as there he is writing his basically his story professional story but some of that before that college and things and and now you know, his relatives will get to to read that and hear his story. So, yeah, I found it very, very fascinating. And I it's like I could hear his voice huh. uh, as I was reading. So it. cool. So that was fun. You talk about reading something, Steve, that's from an area, a line of work that you know nothing about. You know you're going to learn something. Mm-hmm. That was the case, most certainly, when I decided to pick up a read on quantum chemistry huh? and biology why? and medicine well here's why there's a reason why i read the realm of molecules okay this seems very obscure and and it is and yes a fair 95 percent of the book whew, went right over my head didn't know what i was reading but i followed my rule my book selecting rule when i read this and i'm glad i did because no I'm not a quantum chemist, but I was at my library book sale. My wife and I, we go to our local library's book sale that they have every summer because you can get books for like a dollar, two dollars, sometimes even just a few cents. Mm -hmm. Always a cool find. I found a book that was my kind, a thin little book I knew I could get through (laughs) because I start books and I don't finish them. I thought I can get through that. And my book rule is if the title grabs my attention, which mm-hmm. the realm of molecules, I don't, I'm nerdy, so I, I'm not super, super <laughs> smart, but I am super nerdy. So that caught my attention. The book rule is if the title catches my attention, 
And if I flip to at least at least two, preferably three random pages Mm -hmm. and read more than one interesting sentence, I'll get the book. If random pages, when I flip to them without any rhyme or reason, have, ooh, that's an interesting sentence, ooh, that's an interesting sentence, I can figure to myself, odds are, if I read this whole book, I'm going to come away with like a handful of interesting things I wouldn't have had before, especially because I'm not generally looking in the genre of frontiers of modern science. So if I find something that's interesting to me, even in a genre I know nothing about, I know I'm going to come away with something kind of interesting so the last book i was able to make it through with my own two eyeballs because i'm (laughs) usually an audio book listener and Mm -hmm. i read this one with my eyes on paper was something that went way over my head but yeah i got a handful of interesting things out of that quantum molecular chemistry stuff did did someone get married at the end and there was there snow falling down and that that part i distinctly remember there was no fairy tale ending okay All 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 right all right Every year I say, this is going to be the year I read books. And every year is the year I buy books. Right. And, um, <laughs> and then the I, boat there, we? I give away some of the books at the end of the year and I go, this is the year I'm going to read books. I put books on my wish list, on my online account so that my family buys them for me. And then, and then I don't read them. And so this year I said, I'm going to read books. I decided I would be reading like a book a month. Well, here it is, May. I've read one book. But you know what? I don't know if I finished a whole book last year. And for me, it's kind of unusual hearing your choices because both of you had nonfiction books. And I am a fiction book reader. I like when a book takes me to a different place. So the backstory on how I ended up with this book is that um, my husband and I will often have dinner uh, in one of the little towns on the Erie Canal. And those towns, aside from the restaurants, tend to close up pretty early. So normally by the time we show up for dinner, the bookstore is closed. But one night we happened to go, and it was before Christmas, and the bookstore was open late for holiday shoppers. And I was like, it's open. We have to go. And you can't go into a local bookstore and not buy something. Like, (laughs) that's the rule, right? Mm -hmm. Because you want to shop local. And so I did what the saying says you're not supposed to do. I judged a book by a cover. Uh, I found a book with a a, a nice looking cover that I thought was interesting. It had a piece of art on the cover and I was like, oh, I like art. The the piece of art on the cover did have to do with the story, but not as prominently as I had hoped. The book was called The Dutch House, and it's basically a story, kind of a character profile story of this brother and sister through like 50 years of their lives and how this house plays a role in their ever-changing lives and how the house also changes. And I didn't love most of reading it. It's told from the first person of the brother in the book. I didn't have a lot to relate to with him, Mm. but I was like, I am going to finish this book. So much so that I committed to taking it on vacation with me because I knew that when I finished the book, I would just leave it at the hotel, either in the room, maybe the (laughs) housekeeper would want to read it, or like in the laundry room, maybe (laughs) another guest would want to read it. I knew that this was not going to be a book that I was going to bring home to my permanent collection or pass on to any of my friends. And so I did finish the book. And the very last bit of the book is about accepting the things that have happened in your past for what they are and realizing that they don't have to determine your present. And hand in hand with that is the idea of forgiveness. Let go of some of the things that people did in the past that weren't so nice. And so even though it was a little bit of a drudgery for me to get through this book, it wasn't really my style. I did make it through, and I'm glad that I did, because what a cool metaphor for life. You know, sometimes the things we walk through are not easy, and it's easy to just give up and say, I'm not going to follow this through. But if you do follow it through, you might get to a point where you have some reconciliation, some forgiveness, where you get some perspective on the things that maybe happened to you years ago Hmm. that hurt that you haven't quite let go of. I have an idea, guys. Since all three of us are in the same, you know, we buy a book, don't read it. 
Uh-huh. You've heard of, you know, people have book clubs. Right. right? Where mm-hmm. they get they all get the same book. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They all get together and discuss it. Why don't right. we start our own book club where we all go buy the book? Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. And just never meet. <laughs> <laughs> right. We could what just... we could check in with each other like once a month yeah. about how thick the dust that has gathered <laughs> on top is. We hope the rest of your day is just as much fun as this. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. Who thinks they have the most meaningful job in America? The question went out to a lot of people surveyed. Who shows up to work and more often than anybody else says, this matters and I am satisfied doing it. Most meaningful jobs, well, surgeons are high on the list for people who report feeling that way about their work. So are teachers. Teachers of all kinds are on this list of people with the most meaningful jobs. But the number one, members of the clergy. Religious Mm. leaders. Mm. Wow, it made me think. I was like looking at the last few years, you know, all through the pandemic, we've heard lots of stories, lots of true stories about pastors really feeling ready sometimes to step out from behind the pulpit and take a break from frontline ministry because it's been a huge burden. And no doubt, I'm sure any pastor would tell you that the work is harder than anything they ever imagined before they were called. But, you know, I'm also sure if you ask them, You'd hear just as many pastors telling you they couldn't think of another place that they'd rather be serving than their congregation. Yeah, it's just a reminder. It's never an easy job what pastors do. The past few years have shown us that in a lot of ways. True. But pastors, thank you Mm. for loving what you do. Facing a whole new day is a lot easier when you remember that God is in charge. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. That's why I don't make predictions. Uh, I've learned over my lifetime the things that I thought, oh, this is going to be, this is the greatest thing ever. It's going to be around forever. Hmm. And then it disappears. Like, for instance, uh, well, I remember when I first got my TiVo, the recording device, the TiVo. <laughs> TiVo, it's like, oh, it's going to be, well, and, and in a way, it kind of is. Because, there, well, you know? the, the TiVo, I think in, in a way, the TiVo. It has stuck around through other DVRs, you know, digital. Okay. So that was a digital, you know, sure. video recording device. And so that somewhat is still around. But here's the main thing that I thought. I was convinced. You remember that time? It, it was a while back that for like three or four months, we were, well, I was convinced that segways were going to be around <laughs> forever. They're going to build cities around these things. Oh, yes, right, that was right. how we were going to get to work. Yeah. Like, boom, exactly. Coming in. Yeah, yeah, segue, exactly. Right. The future is here. Yeah, now it's only in like, you know, mall cop movies and stuff like that or different <laughs> things like that. Never really. I High quality should, entertainment. Exactly. I probably should have known it wasn't going to last forever. This my, my clue would have been, I didn't even know how to spell it correctly. I, was it S-E-G-W-A-Y-S or S-E-G-U-E? Segu? Segu. Segu. I should have known. <laughs> have really when lasted. you ride to work, though, that looks really cool. <laughs> it does look cool. It's okay. You can go back to bed in about 16 hours. In the meantime, thanks for listening to Rise Up on Family Life. I remember when I was coming to terms with the reality of being a beard person. Not like ever full Duck Dynasty, but like people would say, (laughs) oh, he's the guy with the beard. And I'd be like, right, right. I guess that's me. I guess I'm the beard guy. Yeah. I've been the beard guy for a while. Mm -hmm. And you two can see me right now. You know this has changed. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't even know how to say it. It feels strange coming out of my mouth, but I'm now. The mustache guy. Yeah, no beard. They're the beardless guy, but the mustache guy. Now the mustache right. guy. Hmm. It's it was a choice. A not, it I thought it was a caterpillar. Yeah, but, no. It, okay, it, it's not a caterpillar. <laughs> Just but crawled they, up on your lip. I was going to tell you. you. That's that's helpful. Thank you. <laughs> that's. Yeah. It, uh, it wasn't like a slipped with the trimmers <laughs> right, kind of. Right. Now I'm a mustache yeah. guy. It was deliberate. <laughs> mm-hmm. it was, right. You know the important people in your life. My wife said, "You know what? I think you should try a mustache." Ooh. And that was a few months ago. I was like, mm, nope, not going to happen, honey. I don't think so. Okay. But it was time for a change, and the mustache mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. Now, I mentioned important people in my life because my wife said, hey, I like it. Let's right. change it. Let's do Good. this. I like mm-hmm. it. I happened to do the trimming after my daughter went to bed. She's a toddler. I've had a beard her whole life. Ah, uh, that's so right. So this was like the, what's she going to think when I get home? Mm-hmm. Toddlers are so good day. with change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I learned that. Yeah. I learned that when I tried to get her up from her nap <laughs> after I got rid of her favorite daddy beard. It's like, what is not on your face, Dad? What is missing from your face? It was a, it was a transition. We're still working through it, my little girl and I. But I think with a few more, few more rides on the lawnmower, a few more dance parties, a few more of her favorite things, and maybe uh-huh. I'll win her back into my court. Right. The good news is uh-huh. 
God looks on the inside, Tim. He I does. Was, yes. I just got to tell my, my toddler that. Look yeah. at me like God does, <laughs> honey. Reminding you that God is in charge today and every day. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Okay, Sunday brunch. Uh-huh. Do we do Ooh. the thick waffles or do we do the mini cabbages? Oh, I love the Belgian waffles. You're going to go with Belgian waffles. Or Brussels sprouts. Bru- Belgian Brussels. It's the same country, right? Yeah, that's true. Brussels, Belgium. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Huh, I never thought of that. Huh. All right. I make these sautéed Brussels sprouts with balsamic glaze, and we will be serving those on mm-hmm. Mother's Day. Now, 40 years ago, that would have been an insult to my mother-in-law because back then, sprouts were just nasty. The waffles were good then, and they are now, but right, the that... sprouts didn't taste as good. It is not your imagination. It's not that your palate has matured. Okay. Brussels sprouts in the 80s and the 90s were like, And the reason is that there is a chemical that naturally occurs in them, and a Dutch scientist has figured out how to selectively breed that flavor out. So now we have better Brussels, Hmm. and the waffles are also still delicious. Uh, But I can hear the prayer at the dinner table on Sunday. Lord, thank you for mom, and also thank you for Hans van Dorn. For making it so much easier for us to eat our vegetables. Don't hit the snooze button. Come join us. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. They say you can't fold a fitted sheet. Today, I'm going to show you how. From the minds that brought you school lunches, bedtime stories, and relationship advice, comes Masterclass Mom. The secret to perfect, fluffy, scrambled eggs that kids will eat every time is patience and ketchup. From life lessons to one-liners, unlock the knowledge of some of the world's greatest teachers. Getting the last word isn't a science. It's an art. Discover guided... An art. With Masterclass Mom. Discover guided meditations with truly eternal wisdom. Let's say it together. Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's not original to me, by the way. Get all the benefits of Masterclass Mom now with a simple phone call. You do know Mom's number, right? Masterclass Mom, the original expert advice. It's an art. Today is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. This is Rise Up on Family Life.